If you've been tuning into my streams most days, you might see that quite a few people usually request specific guides. One that I've had requested a few times has been a progression guide of what you should be doing within each different level bracket, or at least each big chunk of levels, as you'll have quite a few quest types opening up at specific level ranges. So in this video, we're gonna go over all of that, what you can do starting out, what best practices there are, and what different quest types will open up as you run through that are actually important. As well as some other things such as class X cubes and all the, all the things that people always miss, right? Such as Aethon. <laughs> so you've made your character and you're confused as to why not every class was available. Well, not every class is available during the character creation process. However, you can actually change your class whenever you want at this blue counter here with B. Doesn't matter what level, you can always change your class. It doesn't cost you anything. You can also do your subclass here. And obviously there are some of those classes that you weren't able to access before. You can do those here if you missed those. So definitely check this out. As soon as you log in, that is one of the big things that you should be checking out. And also you should consider not rushing into your character class as it is very expensive to reset. So also time consuming waiting to be able to reset your character skill trees. Don't use recommended when filling these out. Always search out a guide or a build. I'll put a link to the recommended Arx layer builds. That's gonna be linked in the description if you wanna check those out. That should help you quite a bit, at least getting your head around what you wanna play as a lot of those builds do have some notes on what is actually good and why you would want to do them. Now, these reset all skill tree passes. As I said, it's expensive to change these. With every major update to the game and also with any major changes to character classes, Sega usually gives out free reset all skill tree passes. They're not purchased. You can just get them as a handout. They usually come every few months. And it's actually more expensive than waiting to actually buy an extra skill tree for that class. It's gonna cost you, I believe, 500 AC. I've actually bought two myself. Some classes are more useful as a subclass than others, so it's definitely worth sometimes having a few skill trees if you get access to them. Once you've bought one, they are permanent, unlike character slots. You're probably sick of hearing this by now, but Aethon is your man as soon as you start out other than planning out your class. Simply talking to him will open up some client orders with Kofi, which is going to save you a lot of time. He's also got quite a few client orders that you should be doing as he's going to train you how to play the game, especially being a newcomer. This is very important. We'll get to Kofi later, but there are some other quests that will help you out at this point in the game when you're trying to decide what class you want to play. And if you talk to Rebecca, she's actually got practice quests. These are going to train you just basics of the game as well as how every single class works. So definitely worth checking these out as it's going to help you quite a bit, especially if you haven't played something like Fantasy Star Online before. It's actually going to train you through practice. Now on top of Aethon and the training or practice quests for teaching how to play the game, the Arx missions from this globe icon on your menu is also a great way to learn them. I've completed quite a few of these so they're in my already received list. But as you can see here, going through these, there's quite a few pages of different little objectives to train you in playing the game. And the best thing is you're gonna get experience from doing these and also some rewards too. Each day, five of these daily quests will also drop that will give you quite a bit of experience and that's gonna be scaled based on your level. You also get the stars from the mission pass. Weekly also reset every Tuesday. These are gonna give you scaled experience and meseta based on your level. And it's quite a good thing to farm on all your characters. Also, you're gonna get some boost items as well. Now, limited time quests or missions will both become available down the track. They are periodic. They are also really good to run for experience, badges and other rare items. Tier missions are based on the mission pass. These will actually allow you to get stars for completing similar objectives to your daily ones or your weekly ones. So definitely worth doing those as these will give you a big chunk of stars for your mission pass. Definitely worth getting these out the way if you are doing your mission pass. So we're gonna get into experience, best practices before we get into everything else. Fine over here actually has a daily quest. These ones are the little arrow ups. Usually there's only three, but because I've been stockpiling them, I do have quite a few. Now you can hand in up to 15 to stack. You can hand in more if you want to, but they won't count. But anyway, each of these hand ins are gonna give you a daily boost of 5%. So 10 of them can max out at 50% of a tri boost effect, which is gonna give you a bonus on 
experience gain, Masetta drop, and also rare item drop rate. So try boost is definitely something I think more important than just simply the experience boost. Definitely get on top of these. And the good thing is that the recommended quest, this is the featured quest on the Western version, the first featured quest will always cover the three daily quests that are currently active. These will show you the enemies or bosses that you need to complete to actually get these to hand in once it's completed. Now speaking of your recommended quests, you actually get a gift at the end of these. You can also get a tri-boost ticket as a prize for this. In this one, unfortunately, I only got a badge, but doing these each day, you have a chance of getting a tri-boost ticket, which is again, gonna be something you can manually apply to your character, which will stack with other tri-boost effects while you are in quests. It won't tick down while you're outside of quests. There is also a permanent tri-boost effect if you own premium. This is a monthly subscription more or less. You're gonna get a premium set ticket, which has a whole bunch of features. I'll link them in the description, but you also get a mission pass gold with this. So it is definitely worth it in that regard. But you also get a 50% tri boost effect that will always be applied to your character. You don't need premium to be able to do well with the game. It is just an optional thing. If anyone tells you otherwise, tell them they're dreaming because a lot of Japanese players do very well without premium. Also, you'll get Try boost tickets from just simply logging into the game in certain intervals. As you can see here, at my 10th login, I got a try boost 100% ticket, which is definitely worth doing. Just simply logging in each day, even if you don't play, worth doing it, absolutely. Okay, so I did mention before the ARCS mission's main missions. You can actually get rewards that will give you try boost and also experience tickets. So it's definitely worth getting these missions out of the way as it's gonna benefit you in the long run. This is the mission pass that I've been talking about throughout the start of this video. Some tiers of this will actually reward you with tri boost tickets. So another thing you should always be on top of. Playing four players will also give you a tri boost effect. Actually, any amount of players that are human players in your party will add a tri boost effect, but it's definitely best to have up to four as it'll give you the maximum effect. So always try to run with as many players as you can if possible, as it's gonna benefit you greater than just doing it solo. Next up, we have titles, which are basically little achievements in games that will reward you with a title, but also with different items and some of these will be different tri boosts. You'll probably get these by just playing the game but if you really want to you can focus on those specific rewards. Tri boost tickets will also rotate in and out of the fresh find store for different prices. Today for me there was 125% one for 18 star gems. The highest level, the EX Tri Boost 200%, is actually a reward currently by doing scratch tickets here and by doing a certain amount with the scratch count bonus. As you can see here, if I was to do it 50 times, which is holy crap expensive, I would be rewarded with one of those tickets. Next up, we'll go over experience boost, just base experience. So the main one, and this is mostly gonna be useful at level 20 when you get your subclass, is gonna be summoner, as this is going to allow you to get a bonus 100% experience purely for your subclass if you have summoner as your main class. I did a whole video on this, and some people have mentioned that you're probably better off doing very hard advanced quests, but you know what I say? Do those and also do this at the same time, and you're gonna get even more experience than you could dream for. Always important to take a drink before you go on a mission. And if you have premium, if you take a drink, you'll actually get a bonus effect as well. So I recommend getting the Shifter ZX drink or the 1200 Masetta drink, as you have a chance of getting the premium experience up bonus. This is just for premium players, another benefit of that. Next up, we've got the Alliance bonus. If you have an Alliance or you're part of an Alliance, you will have a tree. The default amount at tier one will actually be a 3% bonus, but currently we've worked up to 9% bonus experience at level seven. Once we get to level eight, we'll have a 10% bonus. So definitely worth having that. As you can see here, I have a photonic effect that has been applied to my character. You can get also a rare drop rate. There's a Masetta one. There's also an attack power up. There's quite a few of these effects you should check out and maybe work towards with your alliance. Now, as for tickets, you can actually search on the player stores. I'm actually just gonna use the top sellers list here. On the fifth page, I can find an experience ticket of 75%. If you just search for experience earned, plus 75%, you can purchase these. They do get a little bit pricey, but if you don't have anything else, it's worth getting these.
I just want to re-emphasize that you can also get those experience tickets from the main missions of the ARCs missions. Just want to emphasize on that. Definitely important to get these done as you will get tickets for Tribus and also experience. Next up on the second floor of the shopping plaza at the Photon Drop Exchange it, you can also purchase experience earned 75 tickets for one Photon Sphere. This can get pricier than actually buying them with money. It's up to you. So titles again, you can also get these experience earned bonus just like the tri boost ones. Again, you'll probably get these just playing the game. And finally, the AC shop again. If you have a little bit of moolah, you can actually buy 150% experience earned tickets, giving you that little bit of an edge. So your bread and butter starting out will just be doing arcs quests and also expeditions. I would recommend just getting expeditions out the way. The reason for this is that as you work your way down the list, completing each of these on the normal difficulty, you're actually going to unlock every single one of these expedition locations, which is going to make it a lot easier later on down the track when you need to do super hard missions, or you just want to go and run a specific area for specific drops. It's going to save you time down the track, so worthwhile getting these out the way now. One of the most important things that you need to get done once you hit level 5 is get your mag. This is the little flirty boy on my shoulder. Uh, you can actually do this by going to Kofi. She's going to have a quest for the mag license trial. It's simply just grabbing this quest and then handing it in and she'll do a little bit of discussion in between. Once you've done this, you will now have a mag in your mag list. The mag is just as important to plan out as your skill tree is for your class as it is expensive to reset or replace it. You will need to equip it once you get it and to feed these you can give them just random items and weapons by using feed item. I personally don't like doing this because there's a lot of balancing with these stats. There's a potential to go over a stat and it is expensive to reduce it after level 100 down a stat. It's also important to make sure you raise just one stat. This is not like PSO1 where you can do whatever just to get a specific evolution. It's always going to benefit you to go for 200 points in one stat. So if you're a melee character, go for melee. If you're range, go for range. And if you're a magic user, go for tech. However, if you're a bouncer or braver, always go for dex as this is going to actually double it based on different stats. Now you can also feed them devices by going to the use device point and what this is going to actually do is allow you to use food items which are actually pretty expensive to get. There are some ways we can get those but these will raise a stat pure. This is what I prefer to do. I'd rather spend the time grinding out my setter so I can just buy these outright. It is a lot less time in the end for me rather than wasting my time pulling my hair out trying to balance it with items. You can also buy these from the player stores. They are a little bit pricey. There are other methods of getting these, but at the end of the day, the only wrong way to raise your mag is to put points into the wrong stats. How you raise it is purely down to personal preference. There is no lazy or smart way to raise mags. It is purely up to you how you do this. Now, if you do want to go down the food device route, you can actually purchase these using photon spheres from the photon drop swapper on the second floor of the shopping plaza. These will give you three of the specific food device for every two photon spheres so it can get pretty pricey if you do manage to rack up like 30 of those photon spheres you can get 90 of those food devices just food for thought there also to note there is a main mission for the arcs mission at level 30 you will get a mag raising set will actually give you 50 of the melee range and technique mini food devices definitely something to work towards and the best part is that you can actually do this across multiple characters and then just put all of those devices into your storage and then take them out on the one you wish to boost a mag for. This is how I raised my first mag to 200 right away. Saved me so much time. Jan is also worth doing client orders for as a lot of these will train you in the different currencies in the game and other features such as auto chat and also using fun scratch tickets. I recommend doing this. You will eventually get him as a partner character as well for running around missions with. Definitely worth it in my opinion to get these done as soon as you can. Hans is one of two client order providers in the main gate area. He provides client orders for every single destination in the game. Well worth getting these before running out and doing those destinations. And same goes for Lavia. She's had her name change on the Western version, but hers tend to focus around False Spawn or Darkers if you play the Japanese version. Definitely worth taking both of those characters' client orders. 
Now, in the central area of the gate area, there are class client order providers. These will train you how to play your classes and you'll also get some rewards and even skill points from just doing these. That first one was for fighter and hunter. Malu is for force and texture. And then we've also got on the back side, we've got Lisa or Risa. She's gonna actually give you your ranger and gunner client orders. So definitely worth getting those ones done. Again, a lot of these will actually provide you with skill points for your skill trees. So it is invaluable to do these. There's also some other ones for Braver with Azanami over here. And then we also have these two down here. We got Katori and Saga. Both of these will provide you with client orders for Bouncer, but they're split across different weapon types. So again, doing these, you can actually get some skill points. So I think it's worth getting these done and they are pretty easy as well. Now there is another one you can also do, and there will be more as we get Scion classes or successor classes, but for now, Pietro is the other one that you can use. He will give you the client orders, training you on how to do your summoners. Alright, so at level 17, once you've been doing some expeditions, you will get the difficulty level trial 1, which will allow you to start playing hard missions. This is going to allow you to start progressing into higher difficulty and better experience quests. And then at level 37, you will get the one to do the very hard trial. And this will open up very hard again, increasing the difficulty, but also increasing the rewards, including experience. So at level 20, you'll get the subclass permit, which will unlock subclasses for you. As soon as you can do this, do it, as it is going to dramatically increase your stats. Go and figure out what your subclass is gonna be based on builds. I'll link below the Arc Slayer list of builds. It's a very good, useful resource. Definitely get that out of the way as soon as you can. It is gonna change your life. I know some people are like, but I just wanna play Hunter. The point is that you're gonna get more stats and skills out of this. Level 20 also allows you to get your auxiliary partner. This is through the auxiliary console auxiliary course quest. This is simply going across the road and talking to a start. I've done a guide on this one too and how to actually run your auxiliary partner and what benefits they've got as well. But definitely get this one out the way too as you can do missions in the background. Another one unlocked at level 20 is the sub palette extension trial. This will allow you to have more than one sub palette. This is basically the one, two, zero hotkeys that you will find surrounding your main attack palette, such as these ones here. So this is the sub palette selection. You can access this by pressing on your D-pad up, then left or right, and it will allow you to select a different sub palette, allowing you to have different layouts for your hotkeys for different scenarios. Sophia is also someone that's worth getting client orders done for early on as doing her client orders will not only show you about harvesting and making rings but will also allow you to access the crafting terminal within the gateway ship. Also these client orders give you 10,000 experience a pop which is not something to turn your nose up at. Franca also appears in the shopping plaza and in Franca's cafe as well. They also provide a lot of different client orders for different destinations, gathering materials from all of the creatures that you'll find in those locations. And the best part about this is that your partner machine can even run these too. The daily collect client orders are also categorized as ones that your partner machine or your auxiliary partner can actually run too. This is as simple as setting down your auxiliary console, setting your partner in the salon, and then going to your quarters placing all this down and then sending them out on the missions. I've done a guide on this one too. All the guides I mentioned in this video, I will link in the eye up in the top right corner. But that's how you do it. You just send them off. The best part is when they return, you can collect the experience. So hitting level 20, you probably need to start upgrading your gear or at least the gear that you find dropping around the place. At this point, I would start looking for at least four star weapons as these are gonna be quite a decent little upgrade for you. Once you start doing hard missions, these are probably going to be the weapons dropping for you. So you should try to find one that is appropriate for your class. Pretty straightforward stuff. Just equip better gear. You're fine. Similar to how you are running expeditions. At this point, you can now run any quest that you have available to you on hard. These are available for level 20 and up. This is also going to allow you to have that better gear drop. And you're also going to get quite a bit more experience. As well as drops, Masetta, so on and so forth. So at this point, you should be familiar with client orders. There's a little trick to actually claiming as many as you can as soon as you accept a quest. Just simply go to the globe icon, then client orders, then orders that can be accepted for the field of the quest you're in. And you can just select all of these at once 
and then click accept order at the bottom and it's just basically going to accept them all on the spot without having to run between any of the NPCs. It's going to save you quite a bit of time. A little life hack to help you with that grind process. Urgent quests at this point will be your bread and butter for quite a bit of experience. These roaming ones will actually last you all the way through jumping from difficulty to difficulty up to super hard. However, the big boss ones you should probably run up to very hard as you can get these done quite a bit more frequently than if you were to run those big boss ones such as Dark Files Elder on super hard. It's really up to you how you want to run it, but if you're going for experience, very hard for the boss ones are going to be the better option. Eventually, you're going to hit level 40, and at this point we start going for 7 star weapons. You should have that difficulty trial complete at this point to start accessing very hard, but 7 star weapons will definitely start dropping a lot more frequency now. These will be denoted by the red color of their drop icon. You'll also start getting a lot more rare items dropping. Once you hit level 40, you will hit the mission that you're going to be running the most from here on out until 75, and that is going to be the advanced quest. Kofi will have these new mission trainings. These will actually provide you with the capsule items needed to access these. Forest will give you the A capsules. Volcanic will give you the B capsules, and Desert will give you the C capsules. You will need these to even access the mission. Running these missions will also provide you with capsules for the next rank. Forest requires A capsules to access and will also drop B capsules from enemies. Then the volcano will require B capsules, will drop C capsules, and then the desert will require C capsules and will drop A capsules. And it will repeat as you go down the list, it will go A, B, C, and that will drop B, C, A. So it's pretty straightforward. As for super hard, this is mostly what you want to do at level 55 and above if you want to farm for rare loot. I would not run this for experience no matter what anyone tells you. It is always better to run very hard up until level 75. I have done a full guide on advanced quests. I've got that one linked in the top right as well. But the basic gist here is that the party leader can actually choose to pay for everyone or have everyone pay separately. However, the party leader is the one that has control over the risk or the threat level, which will increase the difficulty and also provide a better experience, so on and so forth. So to run it at level 50, you require 50 caps. And then for each party members, it also requires one capsule. So if you're paying it for yourself, for everyone, it'll cost 54. The threat level will actually stay for a week. And if everyone actually runs it, they will get that 50 rank too. At the very least, every player can either pay one capsule and just run it, or the main leader can pay four capsules and everyone can run it. As you complete runs of this, it'll actually increase the risk as well. But if you were to pay 50, well, if you're paying for everyone, you're paying 54 capsules. And if you're paying for yourself and everyone else pays for the rest, you pay 51, everyone else pays one. Advanced quests are great because they actually give you a bonus 100% experience, which is why everyone runs these. If you hear the acronym VHAQ, this is what they're talking about. Same with SHAQ for super hard. The higher the risk level, the better the experience. And also note that enemies do not respawn, so you should try to go into every single pocket of the map and kill every enemies to increase your chance of getting a PSE burst to occur, which is going to then force enemies to rapidly spawn, allowing you to rack up a lot of experience. There's a lot more to PSE bursts, which I will cover in another video. I did touch on that also in the advanced quest video if you want to check that one out. Once you hit level 55, you're pretty much good to complete everything in story quests. The good thing about story quests is that you actually get quite a few star gem rewards as well as some cosmetics, units and a few other items. Definitely worth going through these, I would say. I've been going through them, there's quite a lot of them. If you like story, you're probably going to have a lot of fun here. If you're someone that is bored by this stuff and you want to actually know the story, I recommend going and checking out PSO2 Episode Oracle. It's more or less episode 1 to 3 in anime format. At the same point, you will get access to extreme missions. These require an extreme pass that will actually get provided to you every 22 hours. Every time you want to run it, you will need an extreme pass. These are not really good for experience. These are actually better for augments or fixes and definitely for money. You probably want to run this with a full party to increase your chances and speed of running this. But this is what you want to run if you have Meseta problems. And you've also got those Meseta earned boosters as well. Eventually you're going to hit 75 running all those very hard advanced quests and urgent quests. Now at this point you will start getting unit X cubes such as a hunter X cube instead of going up levels. You can see we'll start getting orange experience at this point. Once that meter fills we'll get one of these class X cubes. Now you should probably start stockpiling these now. 
do not trade them for X cubes as it's not worth it because later on down the track you're actually going to be needing at least 200 of these to upgrade some of your really awesome 15 star gear. Start saving these now if you are playing on a 75 character as it's going to save you a lot of time and frustration in the long run. There will also be a way to transfer these class ace cubes into skill points a little bit down the track but we'll get to that bridge once it arrives. So you can also transfer these class X cubes for X cubes. Let me tell you the X cubes are going to start dropping like candy eventually. Don't worry about it. I would just save them right now. So I get a lot of people that actually say they only want to play one character class. And let me tell you, it's actually not a good idea. It is in the long run. Eventually, once you do have all your classes maxed out, it is actually worth getting every single class in the game to 75 because you are actually going to get a bonus applied to your whole account, not just the ship, which I thought it was previously. The whole account, every character you run will get this boost as long as you have a character at level 75 in that class, such as summoner here, 10 hit points, 40 melee defense, as well as ranged and technique defense with that same amount. I've also got Gunner here. I've done those two at 75 at the moment. I get a bonus two photon points, 15 melee power, 40 range power, and also 10 melee defense. These class boost bonuses will apply to every single character on your account. Even if they're starting out, they get these stats right off the bat. Right here is the bumped.org fantasy star blog. And they've provided a list of the total amount of stats you will get if you level every single class to 75. So you can see those stats, they're basically like having set bonuses on a bunch of units. Definitely not anything to turn your nose at. Look, at the end of the day, I don't care how you want to justify how you play, but this is definitely something to consider as this is free stat points. It's going to make your character even stronger. The basics to leveling up through this game are to use your boosters, make sure you're doing your arcs missions, run as many client orders as you can, and also run expeditions to unlock everything. And eventually you will get to those very hard advanced quests, which are gonna allow you to rake in that experience. Keep upgrading your weapons and your units. All those weapon upgrades I was talking about apply the same thing to your units as well. Don't worry about it fixing just yet. We'll get to that once we start getting more content. Japanese players have been soloing a lot of the hard content right now to give you an idea of how easy things are right now. Hopefully that was useful. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, more beginner's guides up here, including the advanced quest guide I keep talking about in this video. Hopefully this was useful. Have a good one. I appreciate you all. I'll catch you next time. Bye.